What is one way to feel fabulous that truckers may overlook, but where you can save money on the road? Hello, this is Vicki Simons with TruckDriversMoneySavingTips.com, and we are going to be talking about Feeling Fabulous Friday and how you can save money on laundromat, uh, your use of laundromat service. So when you're on the road as either a regional or a long-haul professional truck driver, uh, you can only pack so many clothes in your truck. And unless you are a clothes horse and you pack an entire month's worth of clothes in your truck at one time, uh, there's probably going to be some kind of a, uh, a need for you to stop and do your laundry. So if you're going to be stopping and uh, having a shower, you want to have clean clothes to change into. And that's especially true uh, when my husband Mike and I were on the road. There were usually it was every two days or every three days between showers but we would change underwear every day okay but there came that time when we had to absolutely positively uh, go and do some laundry so our advice on doing uh, laundry is to separate the lights from uh, the darks the delicate clothing from the heavy duty uh, add the cleaning aids uh, that is the detergent uh, bleach fabric softener and obviously uh, now I do not recommend either bleach or fabric softener uh, to the water because uh, they are they can be toxic to you uh, you will want to wash the, the uh, clothing on an appropriate temperature setting usually we do our whites on hot and our uh, you know our colored clothing on either medium or uh, that is warm or cold settings okay and dry the clothing on a temperature, appropriate temperature setting. And by appropriate, uh, for example, uh, my husband and I were in a laundromat one time when someone, even against the posted uh, signs, went ahead and put something like a windbreaker in there with very uh, delicate and flammable type uh, meltable uh, material there. That That's the kind of thing that should be air dried, okay? Uh, if you have delicate type things, especially ladies, if you have delicate clothing, clothing like underwear, okay, uh, you'll probably want to uh, wash that, even wash it by hand, and uh, air dry it, okay, probably you will not want to run that through uh, the laundromat, all right, uh, just so that you will know, the elastic on some of your underwear, uh, if it is re exposed repeatedly to high temperatures from laundromats, it has a tendency to uh, wear out. That elastic can wear out, can lose its, uh, its stretchiness and basically just be such that you have to throw out your underwear or else replace the elastic, which could be a real pain in the neck. Okay, so like I said, we uh, didn't change our, our clothing, our outside clothing, uh, nearly as often as we did our... Uh, our inside clothing, our underwear. But the thing about it is, is you want to make sure that when you are changing in your truck, okay, when you have, for example, smelly or wet clothing, you want to put that, you don't want to just ball it up and stick it somewhere like in a plastic bag because it'll get moldy and mildewy, okay? You want to be able to have one of those mesh type of bags uh, that can breathe and you don't want to just wad stuff up. You want to be able to hopefully dry it out a little bit, maybe just tack it up somewhere, maybe hang it on the um, the edge of your uh, top bunk there so that it can at least dry out before you put it in the, the laundry bag. We had a situation when we were uh, on the road one time, we were up at a, um, a truck stop in Ohio and we had a box that we were going to be using for uh, as our uh, laundry basket. And one of the uh, janitorial people uh, saw fit to take our box out of the laundry room and actually throw it away. And it's kind of like we got back and it's kind of like, what are we going to put our clothes in? So one of the tricks that I would say, uh, when you are uh, doing your laundry, uh, one of the ways that you can always make sure that you have something to carry your clothing in is if you have the mesh, so for example, if you've separated the, in your truck, to have one mesh bag with the lights and one mesh bag for the darks, and then go ahead and wash the mesh bags when you're doing your laundry, and then when the mesh bags are dry, then you can just go ahead and, and refill those and take them back out to your truck. Just make sure you don't put them down on the floor, okay, or you could potentially uh, undo what you were going to do. Okay, so... Uh, another thing that you want to bear in mind is that some of these um, these laundromats, uh, they charge for a little box, a little tiny box of soap. It may or may not meet your needs. Uh, it would be a good idea if uh, your home support team 
would send you out with a supply of, you know, whatever additives that you're going to be needing, particularly your detergent, and so that you don't have to spend that extra money on the road. Also, uh, you'll probably be getting a feel for what kinds of uh, drying situations are going on. I know Mike and I stopped at a truck stop in Kentucky one time, and it was one of these all-or-nothing type dryers, okay? In other words, it was not a put a quarter in and get six more minutes worth of drying time type. It was like put in another dollar twenty-five and get another hour worth of drying. So if our clothing was slightly damp, okay, we'd have to waste all that money and then be just uh, watch the, the dryer, you know, um, basically run endlessly, so to speak, um, to, to dry the clothing when it was already dry part way through the cycle. So... Uh, we won't be making that kind of mistake again. All right. Uh, obviously, your options for doing laundry on the road are at the home of a friend, at your company's terminal, at a truck stop, a hotel, motel where you may be staying, in your truck if it's equipped with a washer dryer, but we've never heard of one of those. Uh, maybe some sort of an owner-operator, fancy-dancy type of a situation. Uh, in your truck, if it's equipped, like I said, with a washer dryer, by using a portable washing machine and line drying in your truck or at a self-service commercial laundry facility. Those are the kinds that uh, we are most familiar with out on the road. Uh, we tended to uh, try to stay out on the road for, say, a couple of weeks and then come in. Okay, uh, If that's not possible for you, you may end up uh, doing it at a, at a company terminal or at a, a truck stop. Okay, um, one of the things that can be very nice, uh, but also very scary, is if your uh, company terminal allows you to be able to wash clothes for free and drive for free, okay, you may have to schedule uh, around other drivers who are also using those uh, machines for their own, uh, their own laundry, okay, and that can be quite a challenge sometimes, and you just uh, need to bear in mind that if it's free, Okay, uh, don't look a gift horse in the mouth, okay? Also, um, if it's a regular uh, vertically mounted uh, washing machine, the spin cycle on those generally tends not to be the type that, that spins out a lot of water, okay? I prefer the horizontally mounted washing machines that can really uh, rotate the... Um, those get a lot of your uh, get a lot of the water out, okay, and that way uh, it takes less time to dry. Okay, we had a laundromat one time where we went to, where the uh, uh, they actually had an extractor. Okay, it was a high speed velocity uh, centrifuge, and it was one of the, it was wonderful. We spent like a quarter, maybe seventy five cents to run this thing through. It took like only six minutes, but it got so much more water out than those washing machines. Then they closed out that laundromat and they made a new one where all the equipment was new. It was wonderful. So we didn't need that extractor anymore. Okay, uh, there are some uh, locations listed uh, online. I've got the, um, it's the Coin Laundry Association. And I'm looking at this information from our website. It's on the laundromat page of our website. The Coin Laundry Association touts itself as the only national trade organization that services the coin laundry industry. And while their site has a search form through which interested people can uh, look for a, an area laundry, they only list coin laundries that are members for a fee. Okay, They do not list um, uh, other types of coin laundries uh, who are not members of that association. Okay, I've also got on here... I need to update this, but anyway, the trucker's friend has a list of the various truck stops there and whether they do or do not have a um, a washer a laundry facility there. All right, and our Twitter friend Mahanga Hila uh, Misfit. Uh, I don't even know if he's online anymore, but anyway, he gave us a tip about finding laundromats through the Yellow Pages app on your smartphone, which is kind of neat. All right. And I'm just going to go down through here. Also bear in mind that the basket capacity of a washing machine varies greatly. In fact, when we were looking for a, a, you know, a washing machine for our home, we went with a large capacity uh, basket, basically a commercial grade type of a washing machine. And that allows us to be able to do ever so much more clothes, say maybe 50% more 
uh, clothing in a, a particular load than a smaller basket would. And uh, Mike, when he was uh, away at graduate school one time, he had little tiny bitty uh, baskets, and it took more loads to be able to do that. Also, uh, there are some laundromats that have their laundry, uh, their washing machines equipped with a super cycle for uh, just maybe a quarter more. You can get three more minutes worth of washing. And uh, you'll want to determine based on the dirtiness, if you will, of your clothing, uh, whether or not that's worth it to you. Uh, one of the things that you want to do if you have an exceptionally dirty load is whether or not you need to pre-treat your clothing to make sure that uh, you get some of the stains or gunk out. The uh, situation boils down to this. Okay, if you have the type of stain that I acquired when we were in truck driver training school, you will definitely need to pre-treat your uh, laundry. What happened was, and I was not not even aware of this, okay, uh, I had gotten up underneath a trailer. And of course, we went to truck driver training school uh, towards the fall, towards the winter uh, part of the year, graduated, uh, you know, somewhere in the December area. But anyway, uh, it was cold, even in South Carolina, and so I had my winter coat on. I can't fit into that particular winter coat anymore, but the fact is it was one of those that um, it had a, a fixed uh, waistband and a zip-up uh, front, okay? So you put the little thing in there. But anyway, when I got underneath the trailer, I got a whole bunch of lubrication there on the back of my uh, jacket. And so I'm coming back into the classroom and they're like, what do you have on your coat? And I'm like, what, what? And uh, I took it off and there's this gigantic uh, smudge of lubrication grease there. And uh, it was one of those things where, you know, what was I gonna do? Okay, well, the best thing to do when you're in a situation like that is to use goop, okay? It's a hand cleaning thing. But anyway, just take the goop and smear it on there, okay, let it soak in good, and then do your, uh, your regular uh, laundry, all right? Don't overfill either a washer or a dryer, okay, when you're, when you're doing your, I know you want to save money on that, but the thing about it is, is if you overfill it, you're not going to get good um, agitation in the washing machine, and it's going to take forever for your clothes to dry, so you want to uh, pay attention to that. All right, and I've got some uh, a table here where you can look at to see more information about um, the six-minute increments and how where you know that sort of that um, mass, that critical mass is. All right, where you're gaining or losing versus on the um, on your drying cycle. All right, so we actually there was a um, a laundromat in Greensboro North Carolina not too far from the terminal uh from the main headquarter terminal from one of the trucking companies where Mike used to work and this particular commercial laundromat actually had uh free drying okay so they said as long as you wash at their facility you can dry for for free um so that was kind of nice all right so you want to uh pack his, uh pack clothes Always when you're going in for a shower, take fresh clothes with you, okay? Um, it really helps. You don't want to get back into dirty clothes after you've gotten clean. And obviously, if you can do your, your, your washing at home, you save even more money. Okay, uh, bear in mind uh, the cost of uh, water and laundry detergent and your additives. Okay, I'm also going to say, I mentioned this before, but let me be real specific about things like chlorine bleach and fabric softeners. Those can have toxic chemicals and can affect your body, okay? Uh, when, you, when you're when you inhaling the, uh, the um, artificial scent from the fabric softeners or if you they have the volatile organic chemicals there that are in those and also you have a situation where um, the how it affects your skin, okay? When those chemicals get into the fibers of your clothing, okay, they're going to be laying against your skin. Your skin is your largest organ and of course you're going to want to take care of the health of your whole body so don't expose yourself to toxic chemicals that way I'll be talking more about toxic chemicals in a later broadcast okay so uh, that being said I've just about exhausted my um, my wealth of information here about laundromats and doing laundry and how to treat your clothes 
when you're on the map except for one thing and let me I'll mention that uh, next but let me just say if you've gotten value from this broadcast or this video please feel free to like it and share it with others uh, help other professional truck drivers learn how to save money on the road okay if you're a, a local professional truck driver you can also do the same alright my last tip is about whether or not you are um, what you're sleeping in okay if you're a regional or a long haul that is a you know a maybe a coast-to-coast -coast driver and you have a sleeper berth okay you're gonna be sleeping probably either in sheets between sheets or in a sleeping bag okay obviously from time to time you're going to need to clean your sleeping your linens or your sleeping bag okay your pillowcase that too okay but um, it uh, you're usually sleeping uh, your sheets will fit into a regular load but a sleeping bag will not fit into a regular sized uh, washing machine okay you must use an an extra large washing machine to do a sleeping bag okay the last time I washed my sleeping bag uh, Mike used a triple sized washing machine to do it just so that it had enough room to rotate and agitate and make sure that all that soap was getting in there and it had good uh, ability for all that dirt and um, skin cells to come out of there okay and that's one of the things that you need to be worried about too okay we slough off our skin cells and some of us slough off more of our skin cells in our sleep than others of us do so if you're one of these you don't want to be sleeping on top of a lot of dead skin cells forever and ever you want to be kind of either vacuuming those out or just sweeping them out of your um, out of your bunk <laughs> so uh, regularly you're going to need to wash those so be aware that some professional uh, some truck stops may not have an oversized washing machine for you to do that so you probably will need to go to a laundromat um, even if you um, you know like to be able to do things as frugally as possible the last time we did that it probably cost us somewhere in the neighborhood of between six and seven dollars just to wash the, the sleeping bag and then obviously the cost to dry it as well okay I hope that you're not seeing uh, varying colors uh, on this video it looks to me as though the, the colors are, are moving around so I think what I'm going to do starting tomorrow night uh, is go back into our studio and hopefully the, the colors uh, won't go weird on me but um, anyway the <laughs> well please join us tomorrow night for Savvy Saturday we look forward to sharing our tips with you until next time my husband Mike and I wish you safe travels and lots of money saving opportunities on the road have a great night drivers thanks